Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Today we're going to look at a little 5 inch color uh, television. It's made by Sears. I have an affinity for these little 5 inch color sets. Uh, they don't show up very often when usually they broke. Something uh, like this would just hit the trash. And you don't see very many of them. So this one I picked up at an estate sale. It was kind of ratty looking. It said rescue me. The price was right, so I did. Uh, if you're curious, it is a model 564-4000150. I think 564 was Sanyo. I want to say it was Sanyo, maybe Toshiba. Um, anyway, it's got the little handle as a stand, which you can then set down. Uh, lots and lots of user controls here. If we just take a look at this, you've got your earphone, you've got your color tint, AFC brightness, contrast, vertical hold. On the rear, you've got a manual degauss, and you've also got a horizontal hold control. Nothing on the left side, it's just blank here. I have no idea what this thing's going to do. I haven't plugged it in since I got it. So I guess the next thing we'll do is actually apply power to it and see if we can get anything probably not but you never know most of the time these things just work and they need just a clean up and some maintenance so I'm hoping that's what it is somebody shaved off the uh, neutral blade well that's a good sign really touchy uh, volume pot there. Let's see if we can adjust our vertical hold. Obviously gets channel 6. So that's the only thing you're going to get around here. Just band scan through the UHF, all you pick up is the digital garbage. It's hard to see on camera, but the grayness is a little on the green side. So I'm going to assume that it's going to need some grayscale setup adjustments. In fact, if I turn the uh, contrast down, and turn the side lights off here. And move that away. Hard to tell. It's a lot of reflection off the uh, tube. Well, anyways, oh yeah, that brightness control is super touchy. Doesn't do much of anything. So is the contrast. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it. Let's bring some light back into it again so we can change the exposure rate. But around the edges here, we have some, uh, definitely some purity problems. So let's see if our little manual degausser button works. I mean, I can hear it doing something. Makes a little click. All right, well, anyways, I think what we're going to do is open this thing up. And we're going to take a look on the inside, just see how it's laid out, and then do some uh, service adjustments on it and see if we can't get it dialed in. And then hook a real signal up to it and see uh, what our color looks like. I noticed that the primary screws are all here. Let's remove our little power cord. If it's like most of these, the top half of it just comes right off. Yeah, let's see.
It's trying to do something. Maybe the bottom separates. Yeah, it looks like something's coming off here. Sure is trying to come apart. Trying to see if there's any additional screws here that might be holding it on. There we go. There's our bottom cover. And if you're curious, that's the picture tube it uses. There's your type of fuse it uses. Boards made by Elna. Got a production number here. First thing I notice is somebody has soldered on this uh, coil right here. You've got a jungle IC for your video and color. Horizontal oscillator control, horizontal stop control, vertical size, you got your sound, various capacitors here, and at the back, it's pretty busy looking. At the back we have our uh, bias and drive controls next to the horizontal. And we've got our flyback controls here, our screen and our focus. Still failing to see why the top's not coming off of this thing. There must be additional hardware that's holding the top on. Screw that holds the antenna in. Looking up top here, I don't see anything that would be holding that on. It's almost like the uh, rest of this case is supposed to be stationary and the board just comes out. So we can try that. Oh, that screw's loose for sure. Let's see if this is just one where the board folds out. That's what it looks like to me. So you've got a, a tie here that's holding that in. And then you've got your antenna board back here holding things in. That more or less is your service position right there. You can undo some more of these harnesses and get this stuff to come out. Like that there. And then there's another connector here on the back. And then I think there was a third connector that was kind of holding things up. Well, anyway, that's a tie there and that's a tie there. I want to get this board out so you guys can see it a little better. But there it is. So this is our main board. It's got everything on it. Definitely Sanyo. You can see there the... Uh, Labeling on the IC there that says Sanyo. Let's 
see if we can yeah so there's kind of your service position with everything on the side there get extensions for your antenna and whatnot you can get that in there easily let's just uh, get this off the camera mount so there it is let's see if we can get a little more light on it it's a very well designed thing it's not a cheap thing I'm kind of impressed with the build so far now these are your tuner adjustments for your Varactor this is your regulated power supply and it looks like there's a B plus adjustment and a low voltage adjustment there here's your self-contained IF stage your sound Discrete outputs for the sound, that's kind of cool. It's your big fat color crystal back there. That's like one you'd see in an old machine, like a tube set. Lots of service adjustments, which is cool. So you can really tweak this thing if you want to. Uh, I didn't nominally see any problems with uh, soldering on this thing. We just take a look around on the board. The board's pretty nice looking. Even in areas where you'd see heat buildup, like the flyback, like if we come down here to the flyback, the soldering on that looks pretty good. And even if you zoom in on it, we can touch it up, I guess, but it really doesn't need anything. Yeah, pretty well made. Let's come over to the color crystal, or uh, color I see here. And again, soldering looks really good. So yeah, this thing's in really nice shape. So I think all we're going to do is clean all the pots and maybe do some setup adjustments. And that's, uh, that's going to be that. Now that we got this apart for the most part, all I really need to do here Is, uh, clean the pots. Let's see if I can get this at a better angle so you guys can see what I'm doing here. Maybe a little more light. There we go. So what I'm looking at here, if it will zoom in for me now. So you see these little holes at the top here, these little vent holes. That's where you want to get your uh, contact and control cleaner in and then we're just going to work them and clean them up a little bit I apologize the lighting's a little poor and then we'll get some down here on the AFC switch too and then we'll just work them That was color. And then there's tint. We'll work our little AFC switch. brightness control that was really touchy contrast control that was touchy and then our vertical hold control that was very touchy We'll come back here and clean our little gauzing coil switch here. A 
And then maybe just dust a few things out here. I know that the chassis has got a little bit of dust at the back here where all the vents were. Just take a brush and brush them out. Okay. Let me go get an insulator for the bottom of this board. Alright, so I'm just going to slip a piece of cardboard underneath here. Because I don't know if there are any little metal flakes or anything like that hiding under there that would present a problem to me. And a VHF. Looks like it gets connected up there. Or here maybe. Just trying to figure out if I need that. Yeah, I guess I do need that down there. We'll see if we can make this work. Because I don't have oops, any extension cables. And i got to be able to see what's going on here with the uh, screen. So this could be interesting. Alright, so let's see if this thing will even power up while it's out of the cabinet. Looks like it does. Now we have a little more control of our brightness and our contrast. Let's see now. I think what I'm going to have to do is uh, rig up my little test pattern generator right to the back of the tuner here and then dial it in that way. So, I'm going to get some clip leads. I'll put the clip leads up to the tuner. And then if I turn this on, we scan. Post keys. Be seeing something. I get six. Maybe I'm hooked up to the wrong spot because I should be getting something. Maybe that's our UHF tuner versus our VHF tuner. Let me try the other spot. Alright. Oh, I got something. Let's see if I can uh, stop it from rolling a little bit. It's freaking out, man. My, uh, doesn't like that at all. Let's see. Got something going on there. Maybe one of my antenna leads came loose here. There we go. The vertical on this thing is so touchy. Alright, so we got our contrast. Not very bright. Even with the brightness all the way up, it doesn't look all that good. Uh, let's try a different pattern here. Cross hatch there. Yeah, let's see if we can go back to uh, that there. Let me see if I can touch up the uh, vertical size, which doesn't look quite right to me. It looks like a lot of overscan. I can find the appropriate tool.
Let's see, there's that. Oscillator, there we go, vertical size. That's an extra tiny potentiometer right there. No centering though. We got missing scan here. I don't see a centering control or a jumper or anything like that. So I guess we're just going to have to adjust it to where the scan at the bottom takes over there. Alright. <clears throat> Let's see if I can go to a blank here. Yeah, not very, uh, not very bright. I'm kind of disappointed with that. Uh, let's see if we can. We'll put this at midpoint and the contrast in midpoint, and then I'm going to adjust the screen control on the flyback and see if we can't get a little more brightness out of this thing. Nope, I just get retraced lines. So that doesn't help. Okay. And then, let's see, we have a sub-brightness level over here. That's only a minor improvement. I guess that's what we get out of it. So I guess that's okay. Not great. Let's go back here. There's those lines. There's those lines. Let's see. It's AFC. Okay, so AFC is on. Let's see if we get any color at this point. I'm still... Not happy with the grayscale there, the grayscale is kind of poor. And it's hard to see because of the light here. If I turn the lights off though, then the problem is, is the camera gets overexposed. So let me see if I can just shoot the screen for you guys. Let's turn this off. You might be able to see it, but the uh, there's a tint to the picture, so I'm going to tweak with the grayscale adjustments a little bit, assuming it will allow me to do that. The red's turned all the way down. Interesting. Why did somebody do that? Got a little bit of purity problem up there. And if we press that degaussing button, we can see that that clears up. That's good. And let's see here. Blue was turned all the way up. So if we turn all the screens down, we see that a major problem is, is that we have excess red. I don't know, hard to see that there, but we have excess red. So let me turn our sub brightness down a little bit. The weakest color was the blue for sure. It's interesting how every time I press the degausser, something changes. It really needs to be manually degaussed. But I don't have my degaussing wand with me. So the red's the strongest. We're going to balance it for the red. So we're going to adjust it until it starts to look magenta. And the silly white balance on the camera is going to compensate for that. So that's going to make it a little bit trickier.
And once we get balanced for magenta, we'll turn up our green and we'll try to balance it for gray. And again, the silly thing keeps compensating for it. Drives look okay, the, the lines still look white. So let's switch over to uh, color bars, assuming we can get color bars. There's a rainbow pattern, that's good. Color bars look pretty nice. Hard to tell with the camera exposure, the camera is just like whiting everything out right now. As you can see, that looks pretty good. Nice and bright. And that's where the tint range in the middle. We do have correct adjustment. Looking nice. Let's go back to our uh, cross hatchy here. And let's see if we can touch up the focus a little bit. about as sharp as that's going to get. Okay. Let's switch over to back to channel 6 here. Ooh, I actually have a color. Let me tweak the, uh, the vertical size. Let me see if I can get that dialed in a little bit better. And let's go to a full rainbow. <clears throat> Got a little bit of detuning there, but that's probably my generator. But that like the color pattern looks really nice. So I think that uh, this is good enough. We're going to put this back together and see if I can feed some live TV through it from the converter box and see how it looks that way. This camera is just washing out that screen. The screen looks really nice. Other than some purity deficiencies at the top there, it looks really good. Got some debris on the screen to clean off. So yeah, let's button it back up. Alright. Let's see how she is with a converter box. Assuming that we can actually get some form of reception here. Let's see here. Overly saturated colors. We got a little bit of interference from uh, The box itself. If we move it away from the box, the interference goes down. Pretty good colors. It's gonna blink it a little bit. Now let's get something very clear. I can't help you unless you trust me. Nice bright colors. Pretty sharp picture. We should sure stop blanking it. It's nice and bright now with the tweaks that we've made to it. Our city, your stories. When news happens, count on experience and knowledge, and tune to the people you trust.
Very cool. Yeah, she used to be on CBS back in the day. Proposition 23. Dangerous and costly. The American Nurses Association, California. But now it looks like when we turn the color down, we've got nice grayscale instead of that green tint that we used to have. When I turn the brightness down, that still remains. This is a time for choosing America or Trump. And when the chips were down, Barbara Bruce chose Trump. Bree voted to. Is that the best place you could find a hide? Not bad. This one turned out okay. The debris on the glass, though, I haven't been able to get off. So I don't know if it's a chemical or if it's actual deformation of the laminate that's on the glass. But otherwise, it's pretty cool. I like it. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. More stuff to come soon.